In this video, we'll take a look at two ways of visualizing sounds using the sound card oscilloscope program. As we know, sounds are produced by vibrations that in turn produce pressure waves in the air that are picked up by our ears. Sound card oscilloscope picks up these vibrations through the microphone of a PC and displays them on the screen. Here we'll use sound card oscilloscope to visualize the sounds produced by a set of Japanese dinner chimes. The first way that we will visualize sounds is as waves whose height or amplitude varies over time. This is what an oscilloscope does. It plots the amplitude of a signal versus time. Note that the louder a sound, the greater the amplitude of the waves, and the higher the pitch or frequency of a sound, the tighter the waves or the more vibrations back and forth per time. When we play individual notes on the chimes, the waves have a simple smooth rolling shape called a sine wave. When we play two notes at a time, the two sine waves of two different frequencies combine. Mathematically, they actually add together to produce a more complicated shape. Just by looking at the complicated waveform that we get when we play two or more notes at the same time, it is difficult to figure out what the frequencies of these notes were. In order to better see what notes or frequencies make up a sound, we use another view called the frequency spectrum. Just like a prism separates sunlight into a spectrum of colors, a frequency analyzer or spectrum analyzer separates sounds into a spectrum of audio frequencies. This is the Frequency Analyzer tab in Soundcard Oscilloscope. The horizontal axis of the graph is the range of frequencies from low to high going from left to right, and the vertical axis represents the loudness or amplitude of the tones at that frequency. In the Soundcard Oscilloscope frequency spectrum, the frequencies on the horizontal axis go up to 20,000 Hz or vibrations per second, which is about the upper limit of human hearing. Notice that in the default view, the frequencies on the horizontal axis are evenly spaced, also called linearly spaced, in increments of 2000 Hz per division. Further, the four notes we played were all bunched at the left end of the graph, all below 2000 Hz. Without going into much detail, humans perceive changes in frequency when a tone at one frequency is multiplied by some factor to produce another tone. For example, to produce a note that is an octave above some note, you double the frequency of the original note. To better see this effect, we typically use what is called a log scale on the horizontal axis. When we select the log checkbox, note that each division is 10x the division before it. With the log scale selected, the frequencies of the notes are easier to observe. If we click on peak hold, it will freeze the peaks of each note. With the peaks frozen, we can now slide the cursor over and examine what the frequencies are at each peak. We'll zoom in and then drag the cursor over to the first peak. Oops, it's getting a little squirrely. We'll zoom back in 
and then shift the wave waveform over a bit. And now we're ready to measure. And we see that the first waveform is at about 440 hertz, the peak, which is a, a concert A. We'll then look at the next peak, and we can see in the box its frequency, uh, the next peak. And then finally, we'll look at the last peak, which was an octave above the first, uh, about 880 hertz.